Thank you, Marta. Uh, of course, I would like to thank you for the invitation. It's uh, the first time that I am here. Uh, I'm coming from the Center of Excellence in Finance uh, in Ljubljana, Slovenia. And because it's my first time, I will just allow myself one slide so that you can put uh, my presentation in context. Uh, I'm coming from a regional organization uh, that deals with capacity development in public financial management regional institution that is focused on Southeast Europe or Western Balkans uh, and Turkey. Uh, we have 12 member countries out of which four are uh, EU members already. Uh, seven are candidate or potential candidates uh, to EU and one is neighborhood country, EU neighborhood country. Uh, so uh, that you can put my presentation in, in the context. So I will talk about that in national budgeting, technical knowledge is important, but just a tip of an iceberg. And I will um, <coughs> uh, focus in my presentation on a challenge, which is that um, our, the countries that we are focusing on, especially those that would like to become members of European Union, um, have lack of capacity in economic and fiscal policy design and implementation. Um, we have uh, studied this uh, uh, challenge and also and, and, and uh, gathered the evidence in, in case studies, through case studies in, in, in countries of Southeast Europe, in nine countries of Southeast Europe, and came to uh, a quite startling or, or interesting conclusion that, that uh, uh, in order to make um, public financial management systems work, of course, everybody is aware here that we have to go back or we have to go to the basics and we have to go beyond narrowly focused uh, technical PFM domain. Uh, then I will sum up my presentation. It will take about 15 minutes and uh, probably in my summing up, I will restate some of the obvious things, but I don't think it hurts to restate obvious things because often we say they're so obvious, oh, they're so basic, and we don't address them simply because they are too complex, they are too messy, they are too soft. PFM is hard and it's so logical and it's, we, we all know what it has to be done, but then we have to put it in the context of, uh, of, uh, of, of a real uh, situation when you have small countries that have uh, institutions that, I cannot say, you know, in South Europe that there are weak institutions per se, but they are so small, for instance, that the that, that number of people working in institutions um, uh, have capacity uh, limitations, of course, and especially if, if these people decide to leave the institutions, institutions are weakened, of course. Um, so, yeah, I will talk mainly about institutional capacity, uh, and, and I said that I will address the challenge of, um, of, of uh, lack of capacity for economic and fiscal policy design and implementation in pre-accession countries. Uh, some of you or many of you are aware that the European Commission uh, uh, is, is, is uh, on an annual basis doing an EU economic and fiscal surveillance uh, uh, in, in pre-accession countries uh, to EU. Uh, these countries have to produce either pre-accession economic programs as they are called or economic or and fiscal programs. And we've been contacted uh, as, a, as an institution by, by the governors and ministers of, of countries saying we lack capacity actually to, to write uh, cohesive documents and uh, we looked at the matter. We looked at the matter through looking at the chapters of this document. And the chapters are macroeconomic trends is one chapter, the, the, the other was public finance and the second one is structural reforms, right? And we looked at which institutions are dealing with, with these chapters. And of course, the first chapter would be macroeconomic uh, institutes or macroeconomic departments of ministries of finance. Uh, the, sec the second chapter, uh, public finance is mostly ministries of finance and the structural reforms, it would be ministries of finance and line ministries. And of course, we w it's, it's, it's not a surprise to you, uh, we realize that institutional capacities, capacities in institutions that are producing these chapters is decreasing from uh, left to right as you see it. So being the macroeconomic 
institutes have most capacity or because they are dealing with technical matters mostly, but the, the line ministries, um, they show least capacity because they, are de they have to deal with technical issues, but there are also a lot of non-technical issues that, that, that uh, th it has they have to be dealt when we are talking about structural reforms or fiscal impact assessment of structural reforms. And what we, we, we when we were looking at the matter, we also saw that the availability of capacity development programs for these institutions is also such that there is most programs for the for the macroeconomic areas and then fiscal areas but then the structural issues are less covered when we were looking at the at the at the, at the this this um, case studies in in countries we started with what are structural reforms and we realized that there is not even a unified uh, definition what a structural reform is and then understanding in the line ministries you know how to address this of course it can be problematic but anyway the available capacity development programs for these institutions as i said they they exist but mostly on the technical uh, matters like program budgeting medium term budgeting budgeting preparation budget pr execution etc but we realized w if we want to look at the, where the, inst the institutional capacity is lacking, and this, in, ca in case of our organization, is like ministries, we realized that first we have to push the, the technical uh, the training to, to line ministries, which can be problematic because it could be that there are not even people there in Southeast Europe to be trained because the, 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 the um, positions are not filled. But certainly, as the, I would say technical, technical uh, topics, to address technical topics uh, um, uh, are important, but essential, but not enough, we realized, because um, it, when we are talking about um, structural reforms and uh, how to, for instance, uh, mm, budget structural reforms, how to uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 insert them into the national budgets, there, there is a lot of coordination, cooperation that goes on. There are a lot of processes that have to be thought out. And what we realized is that bef be uh, before technical issues are addressed, the, uh, the, the issues of, of, of a softer nature, of a policy coordination, prop processes, cooperation, interinstitutional cooperation have to be addressed. And this is not necessarily uh, uh, taking place. So as I, as I mentioned, we, when we were looking at the lack of capacity in institutions to produce sound uh, economic and fiscal documents, um, we uh, looked uh, closer to the matter. We, we, uh, we um, um, asked countries that are our members, nine countries, uh, experts from those countries, they're all national experts, to look at their uh, systems to look at their processes, to look how how uh, the policies are made in their countries, how they are budgeted, how they are inserted into national budget, and how they are then implemented, and and we came to several areas that need attention, <coughs> uh, and they are all be beyond narrowly focused PFM domain, and that would be that. Fiscal policy coordination between ministries of finance and other budget users must definitely be strengthened. Um, usually it's, it is a one way uh, mm, mm, communication, mostly from the Ministry of Finance to the line ministry uh, with a request to produce uh, data. And line ministries are, are often either understaffed or, or simply not sure how to respond to this. To, uh, then the 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 procedure, and this is also why, because procedures and guidelines for budget users uh, by Ministry of Finance must be improved. Uh, um, often, uh, often, often, uh, there is not one way uh, explanation what what Ministry of Finance uh, requests, um, what kind of data. So it's it's uh, line ministries are unsure, are unsure how to produce them, right? Uh, then um, 
also the third um, area of attention that is uh, mm, beyond PFM narrow focus is uh, uh, that strategic documents, fiscal strategic documents must be streamlined, some of them abolished due to proliferation. For instance, in, in Southeast Europe, of course, countries have national uh, budget documents, uh, but then they are producing um, documents for the European Commission, for EU separately. Often these documents don't talk to, to each other. Uh, the data in these documents are, are, are different. Uh, different teams are producing different documents, uh, which means that, 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 that the, the capacity is not used in a, in a, in a uh, productive way. And the fourth, uh, the fourth area is that enabling environment uh, at budget users, that is ma mainly line ministries, must be created. So also to that they are able to develop in-house uh, capacity for fiscal impact assessment of structural reforms. Mm, as I explained, and I will explain in, in a few slides uh, further, um, line ministries often in, in Southeast Europe, uh, except Turkey, of course, this, these are um, uh, countries in Southeast Europe are smaller in size, and uh, of course uh, the institutions are small, teams working uh, on, on uh, fiscal issues are small, especially in line ministries, and, and sometimes teams are even not existent. Uh, we heard of instances where uh, accounting departments were asked to, to do the fiscal impact assessment of a structural reform that, that the country uh, was to embark. Um, so, so first you have to identify uh, people <laughs> that will work on, 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 on public financial management. Uh, then you have to, of course, develop their capacity and then they can perform. Of course, uh, the, the fifth uh, um, area that we identified is also that political support um, must be highlighted for, for, for public financial management, which, which is clear anyway, and I will not uh, go further on, on this. Um, as, I as, I, as I promised at the beginning of my presentation, I will go very much uh, to the basics uh, of, of, of what, what a technical expert, what kind of uh, <coughs> capacities also, or capabilities a technical expert has to have when, when, when uh, public, sound public financial management is taking place or where, where uh, coordination, cooperation has to uh, take place in a country um, so that a, a good, a good uh, a document, like for instance the European Commission is requesting, uh, can be produced. These are areas, you know, capabilities of policy coordination, leadership, project management, change management, negotiation skills, presentation skills. These are, these are so basic that you would go like, oh, well, you know, of course, you know, they have to have this. But, but uh, I heard Madame Diogo uh, yesterday, you were, you were saying, you know, when reforms are, are, are being made, leadership is key. And, and uh, often this is mm, all in a culture of, of Southeast Europe, uh, there are two phases in this. Either leadership is uh, taken for granted, everybody develops leadership just like that, uh, uh, and as a result uh, mm, it's not needed to, 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 to uh, uh, develop it or to, to develop capacity on it, or, or simply is not uh, uh, seen uh, as an issue. But, but when you do reform, leadership is, is key. Um, also, also um, in, a, in a sense of uh, mm, what, what Neil said about culture change, that, that when you, 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 ha you do reforms, there has to come to culture change. And um, there is one, one uh, example uh, that, I, that I would like to make is that change management, for instance, is, is extremely important, or, or understanding how change happens. Uh, it is not often uh, or we notice that in Southeast Europe, change, change management, uh, uh, reforms, uh, they are looked as uh, in a more um, in a in a messy way, in a in a in a in a way that they happen uh, uh, by coincidence. But you 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 have to plan for them. You have to understand the logic. And uh, we developed a course, for instance, on how to influence others in order to 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 bring up uh, change, and uh, I, I, I have to say that, that our participants were not sure what was all about. Um, 
So uh, the other thing is that uh, we need to also address the uh, non-existent technical experts uh, in, in institutions. So in order to do uh, sound public financial management, you have to have uh, uh, basic down to, ba to the <coughs> basics that actually you have to have people that work in this field. And in Southeast Europe, uh, especially in the, in the last years uh, where when, when, when uh, the, the, the governments were, or public administrations were in particular under stress also to, to, to um, cut costs, uh, there, there are many positions not filled out, uh, filled due to budget cuts, low, uh, low compensations, high demand of jobs. <coughs> low or low public image of civil servants and unclear career paths or for political reasons. But it could be also that some jobs are simply not filled because they are not identified. Uh, so the, the, the last is that uh, my message is that we have to go beyond narrowly focused technical PFM domain in order to develop capacity for public financial management. First, uh, on the tip of the, uh, on the, of the iceberg, we, we have hard knowledge, uh, uh, technical PFM domain, uh, um, where, where, you know, in order to build uh, uh, individual capacity is to, 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 to develop uh, uh, experts capacity in program budgeting, medium term budgeting and other technical uh, uh, um, areas. Uh, but in order to, to have a full uh, individual capacity or to have a <coughs> to, to, to have full uh, to, 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 to so that the person has a complete uh, capacity, also soft skills have to be addressed. But of course there is much more in order to to have uh, to, to have institutional capacity or to, to, to uh, have a grounding in the quality of civil service. Um, so basically what uh, my message is that we have to go much deeper in order to, be, to build on the size, uh, on the sound basis. We have to look at the matter from a much more complex uh, perspective. Things are much more messier that we are willing to see them. Uh, in summing up, um, as I said, I, I, I will restate what is obvious but, uh, and, and say the technical knowledge is very essential but it's not sufficient for advance, uh, advanced budgeting uh, that uh, governments need, that all stakeholders involved in uh, budgeting need a comprehensive set of knowledge and skills, this is technical and non-technical, and uh, that development capacities needs require substantial resources and strengthening of in-country cooperation and coordination among stakeholders, and uh, as well as a cross-country knowledge sharing, and this is especially important in Southeast Europe when co where countries are small, and that also donor support in this regard must be coordinated and uh, harmonized. Thank you very much, Jana, again for covering uh, so much in so little time. Um, going to the heart of the question of whether there is a distinction between technical and non-technical, there clearly is, and they clearly both matter.